Hey guys, what's going on? Two crews here checking in with. We're checking in with Tun Shan, and today we're on our new bikes. New bikes. Yes. So this is our brand new mountain bike. Tun Shan and I got the same model. This is the Kaze Race Slash. So it's a 29-inch mountain bike. We're going to be doing our first ride on this here in Chiang Mai, riding back to our home. Before we begin though, here's a quick little overview of our bike. We'll be doing a full bike check video here pretty soon on our channel, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our ride. Let's go. Let's go. We're starting here at Kaze headquarters. We just picked up our bikes and can't wait to do our first ride on this. We've been waiting to get our full-size bikes again and pretty happy to be starting on mountain bikes. My first bike was a mountain bike, so it's only fitting that we're doing our fresh start here on the mountain bike. Here we are, starting our ride. I'm also pretty excited to be back on a 29er. So my mountain bike in Japan was a 27.5. Toons was a 29er, so she's pretty used to the 29er. And, oh man, this feels so different compared to the, the folding bikes we've been on for the last few months. Big tires. Rolling smooth. Also, this is my first time on a one by setup. So we've got a Shimano SLX setup here, one by up front, but a huge gear range on the back. Tung's pretty excited about the massive gear for climbing. We tried going to the, one of the local mountains over here on the side just the other day and on her folding bike, she was struggling. She didn't have a small enough gear for the climb. She hated it, um, but I think we'll have some good climbing gears on this bike and oh yeah it feels so good to be back on a mountain bike nice wide handlebars so also uh, we haven't filmed too many cycling videos here in Chiang Mai yet so we're on the north side of town right now that's where this company is located so we're a bit outside of the city I think we're about 10 to 15 kilometers away depending on which road that you take. And this area up here, I'll take the lead here since I've got the maps. So this area up here is really nice. Like there's some really beautiful country roads. There's some really nice country roads without like any traffic. Right here though, we're by the highway, so it's a little bit busier, but we did some riding with our, our host, Lawrence and we could go for miles without seeing any cars. It was amazing. But right now on this ride, we're gonna be going straight down into the city, so I think the roads are a little bit busier. We took a taxi out today because we had to ride back with the bikes. So it's kind of funny, just getting in the taxi with spandex and a helmet and no bikes. And we left our apartment this morning. Our apartment has security, which is nice. So we have a, a security guy up in the front and he'll probably be surprised when we come back with some giant mountain bikes. Fortunately, we have some, we hope we have enough space in our apartment for these to fit. So yeah, I normally ride a, a double drivetrain up front on my mountain bikes. I like having the extra gear range. I think, yeah, we're getting pretty close to our smallest gear already. We're not going too fast right now. I think these gears will be a little bit limiting if we're doing like flat road rides like this. But I mean, this is a mountain bike. I think they have the climbing gears on here. So that should be fine. I don't think we're gonna be doing many flat road rides on this. So our next mission is we're going to have to figure out all the, the good roads for mountain biking here, all the dirt roads. There's a lot we gotta learn. Not too bad of traffic on this road. Also nice to see all the nature on both sides of the street. Yeah, I'm so excited. We might have to go off for an extra ride once we get back home, drop off our luggage, eat some lunch. I think I'm gonna go out for a a bigger ride. We got a flower garden over there. 
Those are the mountains off to the west. So we're riding south right now into the city. A lot of the good rides here seem to be over to the west where the mountains are or over to the north. And there's a little bit of flat, I guess, if you ride to the south. So lots of different routes you can go. Looks like we got a little parallel road over there. Sometimes those can be really nice. You can get away from the traffic if the traffic is bad, but not bad here. We got some nice shoulders and it's not been too bad. The weather here has been amazing. So like at night and in the morning, the morning especially is really cold. It's like it was about 14, 15 degrees Celsius in the morning just yesterday and today. And at night it gets really cool, like below 20 degrees, 17 degrees or so. It's so nice. And then during midday, like right now, it's about like, I don't know, 25, 28 degrees Celsius. So loving the weather. Hasn't rained a single day since we've been here. And <laughs> here we go. We got some barbecue smell. That's gonna make Tunshan hungry. What do you think of that smell, Tun Chan? I like. You like the barbecue smell? Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a dangerous country for Tun Chan. There's so much food everywhere. How's the bike? Uh, good. Good? Good. 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 Yeah, the colors match perfectly. The black and red. Ine. All right, Tun Chan is motivated to get some food, so we gotta hurry up, get home, eat some lunch. It's been heaven eating here. Like the food prices are so low. And not only that, but the quantity of the food you get here, it's so massive. Like <laughs> she's been getting like full steak dinners at a fraction of the price we'd have to pay in Japan. And I think especially for like international food, the food here is really good. Like they do, American food really well. They do Mexican food really well. They do international food just really well in general because I think there's a lot of foreigners that live here and they're not going to eat food that's not that good. Whereas in Japan, there is a little bit of international food, but it's catered to Japanese people because they're the majority. Okay. Looks like we got to turn around here to get to the other side. We're going to go under this overpass. We've been using the Wahoo Take Me To feature a lot here in Thailand and it's been really hit or miss. Like sometimes it takes us to some really interesting roads that are really nice. But at the same time, sometimes it takes us on what seems to be like private roads. It's really sketchy and sometimes we can't enter the road like there's a gate. So we're still figuring our way around, like what roads are good, what roads are not good. But that'll improve with time. We just gotta do some more practice. Looks like we're turning right here. Oh. There was a bike shop there. I guess that's a motorbike shop. It said bike shop. <laughs> but yeah, I guess bike shop can be motorbike shop. It's not necessarily a bicycle shop. All right, let's try getting into the bigger gears on this. I want to see. I've never used like these front chain rings very much, so I'm curious to see how well this works when we're in the big gears. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty big change. We can roll this pretty hard. We're still not spinning this out. We're about 30k an hour right now. Thirty-two. And I'm still not spinning it out. Okay, yeah, this gear sh should be plenty. Yeah, I'll probably make a, a video about like what we feel about the cycling here in Chiang Mai moving forward. There's still a lot we're learning. There's still a lot we don't know. So I'm trying to wait a little bit before we make a 
sort of premature kind of video, but I will say now from a first impression standpoint, the, the town is a little bit busier than I was expecting. Like it's a real city. It's not kind of a small town and especially like the walkability and cycling within the city isn't that great. I guess I was hoping it'd be a little bit better, but there's a lot of bike traffic, a lot of car traffic. And the main thing is the road design doesn't seem to be that great. Once you're outside of the city, like when you're out here in the countryside, especially if you turn on one of these little side roads, it's heaven. But once you're in the city within like a five kilometer radius or so, five or 10 kilometer radius, it is a little bit busy. But once you're out of there, it's heaven. So for now, we're living in the center of the city because that's where our school is. And we don't want to have to commute like into the city every day. So we decided to live in the city. And when we go on our big bike rides, we'll just commute out of the city on our ride. It's no big deal. And now we've got our full size bikes ready to go on some full size bike, longer ride adventures, explore some of the more hidden paths, gravel roads. Can't wait. We've had a lot of fun exploring on the folding bikes. Like it's been so great. Like they were definitely the right choice for starting this trip. We've been able to go to so many places because of them. But when you're only on a folding bike for a couple months, it does start to wear on you a little bit because it is tougher on the longer rides. Like on a short ride, it's no problem. It's really comfortable for short city rides, but uh, especially like if you're climbing mountains, you're going on like triple digit rides, it's, it's a little uncomfortable and they can't go on like the gravel roads, the dirt roads as comfortably. So we're excited to be on some mountain bikes and there's so many places I wanna see. We'll be filming a lot of videos and now, <laughs> Hopefully we can find some local riders here, maybe to ride with and show us some of the, the gravel paths here. I think the majority of people here are roadies. So there's plenty of road rides we can do, but we're gonna try and find some mountain bike people too. I think there is a decent amount of trails here from what I've heard. I'm not sure how much of it is like pure downhill, downhill, and how much of it is like cross country. We'll see pretty soon enough though. So yeah, overall, Bike feels great. We've got the fork locked out. Handling feels good. We'll have to get on some trails first though to really test that out. Luckily, we've also got a hose in front of our apartment so we can wash off our bikes if we need to, if they get dirty from our rides. We got some cattle over here. Always a bunch of interesting stuff to see here. Such different scenery than what we're used to. A lot of these trucks here, the Raptors, really popular. I've seen a bunch of them on the streets here. And yeah, there's so much food on the streets, like so much stuff we're excited to try out. A lot of it is a little intimidating to like order because we don't want to, like we know a lot of them don't speak English. We don't speak much Thai yet, but we started learning Thai at our local school now and we're getting through some of the basics. So hopefully over the next few weeks, we'll be comfortable enough to go up to some of the different street vendors, ask about some of the different foods, at least like the prices and uh, be able to order some new stuff, hopefully. Uh, that's a pretty scary thing. Like that wasn't so bad, but a lot of bikes do pull out into the road like randomly. So you gotta be really cautious about that. Anytime you see a road or a place where like a bike can possibly pull out, you gotta be aware because they might just pull right out into the intersection. So definitely have to be a bit more attentive while cycling here. But the drivers are all really respectful. Like no one's intentionally a jerk to cyclists here. We haven't met a single like driver that was aggressive towards us but there's lots of drivers who are speeders. <laughs> huh, looks like we're passing through a little market area maybe. And oh, just riding over these bumps now is so nice. When we were on the folding bikes, we feel like every bump really bad. But now 
we're just in like a smooth big pickup truck just feels rolling over like butter looks like we got another underpass we got to go through here That one's nice and short. Turning right here. Toontown's gonna take the lead here. The other interesting thing, we just passed a Japanese restaurant. There's so much Japanese food here, <laughs> which is funny because we just moved here from Japan. So right now we're not longing for Japanese food because it was like everything we were eating every day for quite a while. But in the future, after we're here for a while, I'm sure we'll start craving some Japanese food and we'll have a bunch of options here. Like in the shopping malls especially, over half of the restaurants were Japanese foods. It's really funny, they got everything. They've got Daiso, they got Yoshinoya, <laughs> a bunch of katsu restaurants. And the Shabu Shabu restaurants are also really popular. We've seen a lot of those. Uh, we got our temple here. There's so many temples here. We got a, We haven't really done any of that kind of sightseeing yet, but We'll probably do a temple ride one day on our folding bikes. Let us know if you'd like to see that kind of content and yeah, also let us know what kind of videos you'd like to see more on our channel. Do you want to see just more cycling videos like this? Do you want to see more kind of like sightseeing kind of cycling videos? Do you want to see more food kind of videos? Let us know what you want to see. Looks like we got a traffic jam here. Some of these roads do get backed up. The nice thing on the folding bike is they've got the narrow handlebars, so it's easy to navigate. But with these wide handlebars, this actually is a little bit more difficult. All right, let's sneak by here. Let's follow this guy. I'm not sure what's causing this backup. Is it just people parked in the road? Yeah, it's just a narrow bottleneck here. That's so stupid. That's nothing. This is it. Okay. That was causing this whole backup. How silly is that? Yeah, our handlebars are a little bit too wide now. This is a lot easier on the folding bikes. That's okay. Green light. We can go. All right. Smooth sailing from here. So this whole time we've been riding sort of parallel to the, the river that goes north. And we're on the east side of the river. Another temple here, they're everywhere. Hopefully soon we'll learn more about each of them and their significance. Elephants. That's another thing I'm excited to see. Hopefully when we do one of our big mountain days, we'll see some wild elephants. That'll be really cool. Oh, a nice tea house over there. I noticed that in Thailand, they've got a really big coffee drinking culture. So I'm more of a tea person, but like in the supermarkets everywhere, there's like a whole aisle of coffee. And then there's just like a few sections for tea. So the tea selection has been pretty disappointing. But we're gonna have to learn to like coffee, I think become some coffee fans. So same thing too in Vietnam. They've got more of a coffee base, I think. Okay, here we go. We're starting to get a little bit of a, a view of the river here. We're getting pretty close to the inner part of the city. So there's a couple different crossing points you can do here. This is one of the bigger, newer bridges here. We're gonna cross over one of the older bridges over here. It's really cool. Yeah, lots of shops along this river. Really scenic at night. We're gonna have to film a night walking video here sometime, I think. Right here. So this is a one-way bridge, but they've got cycling lanes, pedestrian lanes, so we can, we can cross over here. So here we go. Normally, we'll go through this on the way out of the city if we're riding east. 
and you can see here's the river okay all right let's try keep going straight here the signs are hilarious a lot of these roads here are one-way roads which unfortunately like there's not much leeway for cyclists to go like on the side of the road so generally you have to follow the direction of the the roads even on bikes even on walking it's a little bit sketchy because there's not many walkways for pedestrians all right let's turn on here so i think this used to be like a really popular like district especially for like night shops and stuff it's mostly still closed down now i think most restaurants still need to shut down early so a lot of shutdown businesses in this area but i guess things are starting to come back now that they're allowing some tourism back into the country also from what i've seen online you can use these red taxis here and you can bring your mountain bike inside and you can shuttle up to the top of the mountain that's if you're doing like downhill runs so we're looking for more cross country i like climbing up the mountain myself because then i feel like i enjoy the downhill that much more so i enjoy both uphill and downhill on mountain bike and here we are approaching the main square area so the square the center of the square is the old old city i guess and it's pretty funny like it's a it's a square it's like a moat basically i guess chiang mai used to be an like ancient kind of planned city and everything just flows around the center so it's a one-way loop on the outside going clockwise and then if you're on the inside loop it goes counterclockwise the traffic here actually can be a little bit busy and crossing the street is a little bit sketchy at times but it's not too bad once you get used to things here these are some leftover decorations from the the light festival unfortunately we arrived a little bit too late for that but still we get to see a lot of the leftover decorations so here we are we're entering the square officially we're on the outside of the loop there's the moat right there we'll probably film a full video here as well it's a pretty cool route minus the, the busy traffic. If you get up early enough though, it's not bad. It's pretty nice. Okay guys, we're gonna finish up our first ride video here. Let's see, what did Junshan think? Hatsu ride dou datta? Sugoi okatta. Sugoi okatta? Sugoi karui te kanji iru. Naka flatto no misi da kedo, sugoi karui te haijuku, haiku ikeru to kanji ta. Um, ori tatami jitensha yori hai hai. Yeah, so. Koshi mo, motto ii. Yeah, so it feels better to go for a proper ride on a full-size bike. Yeah. We've had a good time on the folding bike so far, but yeah, nothing beats a full-size bike, that's for sure. So pretty excited to explore some more roads with these bikes, go on some dirt roads, go on some proper trails, and do some climbing. Yeah. Tunchan really wants to climb Doi yeah. Sutep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the folding bike was a little difficult. No. Her gear was way too big. But check out this giant chain ring on here on the back. She's got a really big climbing gear. I think you'll be okay. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. And also for me, my first impressions of the bike, really good. Yeah. Can't wait to get out on some proper trails and make sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you like the video, also let us know what you think of our new bikes. A special thank you to Kaze for supporting our channel. You can go check out their website to see more of their bike models. And also a special thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your guys' support. And also we want to say one more final thank you to our clothing sponsor, Santic. Yeah. That's it for today's video, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time here on Two Wheel Cruise. Bye-bye.